what is going on guys welcome back to the channel i shot a video uh i think it was two days ago it just got uploaded i'm gonna put a link in the description of that video but the title of the video was faith versus medicine or uh, is taking medicine not having faith so what i wanted to do was it was on my heart to shoot a longer form video to kind of talk about where that video came from and inspired because I tried my best to keep that video kind of light and fluffy which for better or worse I don't really know if that was a good idea or not and I felt like and maybe this is just me being crazy but I felt like the message didn't get across the way that I wanted it to I, I did want it to have a more serious impact I wanted it to be a, a more serious note while also trying to keep it light and fluffy and and you just can't do you can't do both so i wanted to shoot a longer form video and just kind of explain to you guys where i've been at where that video came from why i wanted to shoot it what's been going on in my and shauna's life that kind of i'm going to use the word inspired I, I don't really mean inspired but just where where our faith walk has been <laughs> and i'm gonna warn you now i'd love to not have to cut this video to to, pe to ever live in <laughs> to pieces. So I'm just gonna try to keep it a little more raw and just, you know, just shoot. And I may stop a million times and say, um, or you know, but I'd like for this to be a little more unedited, um, which sounds like I'm gonna curse a lot, which I'm not, <laughs> I don't plan on it. I don't plan on it. So we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. But I think, um, like I said in that video, all, all of that was true, by the way. There wasn't, I, I, I really don't, um, I really try not to, to clickbait or say anything that's that's untrue in the videos, and it, and it really is true. I think it started with Asher. My whole family's been sick within the past like three weeks, everybody except for Eliana. And um, I think it started with Asher. His was fairly mild. He had a runny nose. You could just tell for a couple of days he just wasn't feeling good. Um, and then Shauna, and Shauna's was, it put her down for a couple of days. She, she was really not feeling well, congested and all of that. But what and she had a bad cough, you know, kind of lost her voice, just the stuff that's been going around, um, which I don't know if it's going around everywhere, but here in Pensacola locally, it's been going around like crazy, everybody. But anyway, um, but what was really weird about Shauna getting sick was hers lingered a lot, more specifically the, the pressure in her head and the congestion and the fluid in her ears. Now, this is probably TMI, but you guys know that Eliana is only a few months old, so Shauna is breastfeeding. <laughs> so weird for me to say, like, I don't know why, it's just, that's just weird. But anyway, um, that may be TMI, but and I may end up cutting that out. But anyway, there's a lot of you probably, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of you probably know, if you don't know, there's a whole lot of medicines you are not allowed to take if you're breastfeeding and we'll just leave it at that it can you can pass anyway so shauna shauna kind of had to just grin uh, you know grin and shauna just kind of had to grip and bear you know her sickness there was she couldn't take sudafed she couldn't take anything to dry up the congestion in her head then after that about a week later i got sick and mine was eh, it was pretty rough it, it sucked for a couple of days i felt just absolutely gassed um but the thing that was the thing that was crazy about that too is it just lingered man it was i, I felt so much better I, you know i, I you, you know i don't think i have to go into all the details but you just still felt like you were at 70% you felt like you could not get better and i was taken because my throat the biggest thing was my throat was so sore it hurt to swallow it hurt to talk and, and i don't really talk a lot but <laughs> but so I was taking every morning, I was taking like ibuprofen and I was taking Sudafed every morning. And that was helping out a lot. That was making me feel a lot better. Well, a few days out, I was, I was almost, you know, a hundred percent. I was feeling a good bit better. All of that. The Lord really started working on me and the Lord really started talking to me. And honestly, it, it, I know it was God, but it was one of those things where I feel like it wasn't as much a word from God or God saying, Hey, pay attention to this as it was just it was just irking my spirit. It just, every day to wake up and to take medicine and just, I did not, I was not involving God at all in the process of what was going on. And then I said this on the video, like I said, just go watch that video because I don't want to repeat a, a whole lot. 
But I believe, I believe in healing. I believe that healing is, is for the sons and the daughters. By his stripes, we are healed. I believe that, you know, I, or I say, <laughs> I believe that. And it was just really irking me. It was just really, I don't know. I, I don't even really know how to describe how I felt, but you just felt powerless. It just sucked. You felt like you weren't walking in, you know, you read it and we sing songs about it and you hear about it in Sunday school about how amazing and powerful God is. And then it's like, you got a cold and the best you can do is Sudafed. And it just, I'm just not wired that way. Like I'm just, it was really bugging me a lot. So me and God were talking about it a little bit. I was praying about it. And, you know, one day I woke up and I said, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to feel like crap if I'm going to feel like crap, but I'm not taking medicine anymore. And it wasn't me trying to be prideful and it wasn't me trying to, and hopefully later in this video, I'll remember, let's touch on wisdom and how I feel about using wisdom. But it just, it wasn't, it wasn't me trying to, to just be stupid, but in my heart, I think God knew where I was coming from. Like, God, I, I want to trust you more than I want to trust medicine. And so I really started putting an effort towards, which I wasn't doing before. I wasn't praying, you know, and, and I don't know if every Christian is like that, or I just suck as a, as a son, but like, I, I wasn't even praying about it. You know, I was just, yeah, I know God heals, but you know, we wake up and we take a Sudafed, get some ibuprofen for the throat, and that was it. There was no spirit, there was no going to battle over it. It's an obvious physical battle, but there, I wasn't going to battle over it. And so that part sucked too, and I felt about this big, like, golly. So anyway, it, it all came to a head. All of this is rolling around in my mind. It's rolling around in my heart. It all came to like a, a, a head and it all came to a point when I was feeling a whole lot better. Actually, I may have got my timeline mixed up a little bit. This may have happened before I decided I'm going to stop taking medicine and all that. Actually, I think it did. But anyway, I'm sorry. This is, this is one of the bad parts about not trying not to edit a video as you guys will realize how bad I keep you guys from me talking in circles from the way that I edit. But anyway, one while all of this was going on, while I was not feeling good, one night, Shauna and her ears had been stopped up. She had had fluid in her ears and it, it just, it, it sucked. And, um, she took whatever medicine she could take. And, um, she tried, you know, a, a whole lot of like home remedy type stuff to get it out and trying to, you know, pop her ears and stuff like that. Well, one evening that we put the kids to bed and her ear was just hurting really bad from fluid in the ear. And this thing got really, really bad, like crying, you know, she was laying there and Shauna's not a baby. She's had two kids. Like I've watched the woman birth two kids. She's not a baby. You know, she can take some pain and you know, her, she was just in a lot of pain and there's, what do you do when there's nothing you can do about it? See, that's the thing. She couldn't go take a Sudafed. She couldn't take a leave. There was nothing she could do. Well, she may could have taken a leave or I'd be pro I'm not anyway, but what do you do when the pills don't work? So then your hand kind of gets forced and your back gets up against the wall of, okay, well now my last resort is I better go to war because there's nothing else I can do. I can either sit here and watch my wife cry or I can pray for her. You guys at this point may be judging me a lot. Like you should have been praying for her a long time ago. Like I guys, I get that. That's the whole reason I'm doing this podcast is because it's development, it's growth, it's learning. And hopefully if there's guys out there who are watching this, who are not praying for their wife now, start praying for your wife before she gets sick. Start developing prayer habits to where you say, honey, come here. Let's just pray. Just 10 seconds. God, thank you for this day. So anyway, so she's sitting there. So I start, I start praying. And um, there's just a ton going through my mind. And, and it's a little hard to, ex to go into everything. But I personally was analyzing my life throughout the week. And this was before I was praying. See, guys, I, I'm trying not to talk to you in circles. But anyway, I was, out, I was having one of those weeks where I felt like I just really wasn't living up to my, my godly potential. Um, you know, just watching TV a lot, scrolling through Instagram a lot, just, you know, a lot of stuff that just makes you feel like, dude, this is a waste of time. Like you're not being productive. Things that you feel like that if God thought about us the way we think about other people, God would have been like, dude, you're, dude, you just suck. Like you're just wasting time. Like I'm not too proud of you this week. That's where I was mentally 
like I just I gotta say that because it, it just I'm trying to paint a picture for you guys so here I am that's where I'm at for the week then I go to pray for Shauna that's in the back of my mind and I'm like now now here's a situation to where you know my wife needs me to step up my wife needs me to go to war my wife needs some some relief some supernatural relief some healing and here I am you know I, I I have no authority I have no power not because God hasn't given it to me but in my mind I'm you know I'm this big God's God's not proud of me you know why would God grant my prayer of faith when I've just been being a crappy Christian I, I'm saying all that to say, guys, there's so much stuff we have to learn to, to to walk in. Like, oh my gosh. Anyway, so I I I really start to pray for Shauna, and she's laying there on the couch, and she's crying, and I'm praying, and just believing God, and it's just, and praying in the Spirit, and it's just a time to where I'm just seeking God, and I'm saying, okay, God, all these things are running through my mind, and I'm wondering, you know. Anyway, and. Sorry, guys, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. And I'm praying in the Spirit, and I'm praying for Shauna. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, God, even if I'm not doing everything right in your mercy, can you please just have mercy in this situation? Have mercy for me not having faith. Have mercy on Shauna because I know that you want her to be well. I know that you don't want her to hurt long story short um shauna got some relief that night um you know it wasn't the best night she didn't sleep all that well but ended up waking up the next morning feeling way 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 better but it was a a huge learning experience and what that did that that whole experience what that did was that really put me on my face before god and it really showed me and opened my eyes as a husband and it opened my eyes as you know, just a child of God of where I'm at in a lot of different areas, where I'm at when it comes to my confidence in God, where, when it comes to my authority and believing that God stands behind me and that I, I have the kingdom on the inside of me. And when I speak, I release supernatural kingdom. You know, do I really believe that when I pray or do I say, I believe it pray, but there's a billion different things that in the court of my mind, that, that the defendants tried to throw at that. I've been using that phrase a lot, the court of my mind. Like once I say something, let's go to court, and then there's a prosecutor and a defendant. Is that how it works? There's a prosecutor and then the other guy who's defending. I think that's the defendant. Anyway, um, you know, there's it, they go to war. You know, you pray a prayer and you say, God, I know that you want my wife to be healed. Well, instantly, you know, there's there's prosecutors in your mind are saying, does God really want that? And if he really wanted that, well, when you pray, sure, God wants that, but you don't have no faith. So there's a court being held in your mind and all of these things, you know, I have all of these things that shouldn't be there. And when all those things come up in my mind, I don't have a rebuttal for them. I'm just like, uh, I'm standing there, you know, on the witness stand and I'm just like, uh, well, maybe he doesn't. And if you have questions like that, that roll around in your mind, it's not you it's the it's the enemy of course however when those things are popping up in your mind and you're in the middle of battle and you don't have an answer for them guys it's it's not the time to try to defend truth in your mind when you're in the middle of the battle truth has to be settled in your mind before you ever even go into battle and that's another thing that God pointed out to me I, I just realized all these things all these places in my life started opening up when when this happened i realized like i don't have truth settled in my heart i'm waiting until you know shauna needs me to be a, a leader and to pray uh before i start to try to get truth locked in my heart you know the the time to get is it 100 percent god's will all the time every time no questions asked is it his will to heal like every time no matter what like the time to get that settled in your heart is not when it's time to pray. It's well before that. It's it's getting in your word and saying, God, I need healing and your love to be so locked in that when I go to pray for somebody, no matter what the devil tries to throw in my head, I know that's a lie. I have 100% faith and confidence. And that's, 
God, I'm, so, I'm trying so hard not to talk in circles, but I'm trying to remember everything that I want to bring out. That's, that's such an important factor, too. That's the, the reality of true faith is, is not this huge, huge faith. It's just believing a truth and absolutely nothing being able to dethrone that truth in your heart. The truth that God heals every time. There was never an instance in the Bible where Jesus said, no, I'm not going to heal you, where Jesus passed somebody up and said, I refuse, or Jesus said, you didn't have enough faith for me to heal you. Jesus healed every single time. So when I pray, people should be healed every single time. No questions asked. You can't rebuttal that. Well, you can if you want, but, you know, the Bible says be imitators of God. You know, Jesus was the express image of God, so we should be imitators of Jesus. Jesus said, the things I do, you'll do also. So every person that Jesus ever prayed for was healed. So every person I ever pray for should be healed. That's it. That should be so focused and settled in my mind before I pray for Sean or anybody. Uh, you know, that's just, you realize, you realize where you're at when the smoke starts to clear from battle. You know, I, I also realized my position as as husband and as leader, I realized is, is, is lacking. I realized that I should have been praying for the health of my family way before my family got sick. It's just a, a lot of things that God started bringing to my attention, um, you know, but not in a condemning way, but in a, just in a way of, you know, him being an awesome father and trying to show me and father me and lead me into better places that he's called me to be as father, as husband, and as child of God, because God doesn't want me to walk in no power. God paid a uh, sacrifice to son and Jesus paid a very high price to get me the keys of the kingdom so I could be his hands and feet on the earth. How is the kingdom supposed to get anywhere unless I take it somewhere and give it somewhere because I'm the hands and feet of him. I can't do any of that if this is all messed up, if I can't even believe the simple truth. So it, it, you'll see in that video me making the statement, do you really believe what you say you believe if, if you don't act on it? And I think that was the main point that I really wanted to expound on, you know, a little bit further. Because the story, the story, the plot thickens, so to speak. Mm. So I established in my heart and in my mind, you know what? It is God's will to answer prayer. It's God's will to heal every time. And I started getting that established. And there's nothing that could taught me. It's not about how much faith that that I have because the and we can get into all of this you know if you want to leave comments or whatever but the Bible says you need faith like a grain of mustard seed but don't doubt it's it's not this this huge huge faith or the idea of a great great faith it's just a faith that is unshakable that's what makes it great it's great because there's nothing that can dethrone it in your mind you can say a prayer and say, Shauna, do you feel better? And she says, no, it still hurts. And still, it's God's will for her to be healed. So you go to praying again. Nothing shakes it. That's what makes it great. But that question that I asked, can you really say that you believe, or how did I say? <laughs> do, do you really believe what you say you believe if you don't act on it? And I realized, I said I believed all these things, but I never brought God into the situation, and I honestly believe in my heart that I, the answer to my question for me in my life is no. I did not believe that God healed. If I did believe that God would, through my prayer of faith, heal my wife, heal my son, uh, receive healing in my own body, why wouldn't I have done it? If you really believe that in your own life, if you believe God heals and all I have to do is pray, God said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. You say, pray, say unto this mountain, be moved, be cast into the sea. Don't doubt in your heart and you'll have it. It'll be cast into the sea. If you really believe that, why would you run off and take medicine or do anything else? Why wouldn't you just pray? If you believed that it was really going to happen and it was that simple, why wouldn't you just pray? 
the answer is no matter what we say, you don't really believe that. Because if we really believe that, I could say a prayer in 10 seconds and that's way better than taking any kind of medicine and just receive healing. But the thing is, I asked Shauna this question too. I said, Shauna, why do we do that? I said, why don't we just pray? Why do we take medicine? And she said, it's easier. That's the ticket. I, I honestly believe that's the key. I think that in our heart of hearts, we want to believe that. We want to believe the word and we want to have faith and we want to stand. But it is it takes a fight to stand. And I've hated this, this um, it's not a scenario. I've hated this, ah, uh, oh shoot, what do you call it? See, this, is, this would be good to edit. Um, comparison. People comparing faith to like muscles and building muscles and working out muscles. I've all, I don't know why, but I've always hated that comparison. But I think there's something to it. I think there is a lot to it to where faith, faith needs to be exercised. And I don't think it's faith needs to be exercised in order to work. I think life experiences build upon faith. And when you start incorporating faith into your life and instead of taking medicine, you pray for something and all of a sudden the headache goes away, the next time you go to pray for something, it's not that it's not that your faith muscle is stronger because of the time before. It's just the things that roll around in your head, the purity of faith, like what I was talking about. When things try to come up in the court of your mind, you say, oh no, I've walked this out. I know this word. You can say faith don't work. You can say God doesn't heal, but I've seen it happen. So in essence, yeah, because of you exercising your faith, it does get stronger. But I think that is the key. I think the, the thing is we... We just get lazy. We're lazy because it takes a lot of work to exercise faith. Sometimes it takes some sacrifice to exercise faith. It takes dealing with a headache. It takes having a migraine. It takes not feeling as good as you could feel in order to exercise faith. And this is where we get into an area where I wanted to talk it out a little bit more because you can you can make that statement, you know, have faith or take medicine and people are going to get really upset and really mad and thinking, well, God, you know, I don't think God wants me to have a headache and I believe that God heals and I'm going to take medicine and things like that. And I'm just, look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. You can take it for what it is. In my brain, it's contaminated. I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong, guys. I've taken so much ibuprofen in the last month. I'm, I'm not, just hear me. You're, you're going to hear me the way you want to hear me anyway. So if you want to be critical and, and judge the thought process, you're going to do that anyway. So let me let me just lay it out straight. In my mind, it contaminates faith. In my mind, if I take ibuprofen and then say, God, I just thank you that I'm healed, and then the headache goes away, and, and where in your mind can you say that God healed you? You know, and and how can you not think that it was because of the medicine? How many times have you not prayed, thank you, God, that I'm healed, or not said anything, took the ibuprofen and the headache went away. You know what I mean? Like in my mind, it's, it's, I'm saying, God, thank you that I'm healed and believing that God's going to heal me. Yet I got a plan B or I'm going to take this just in case. And to me, it's like they fight against each other. That, that does not work together. That would never in my brain, it would never be able to compute. Excuse me. It would never be able to it would never be able to stand forever. I would wonder, did the headache go away because of healing or did the headache go away because of the medicine? So like for me, I'm, I'm trying to walk out, not taking medicine, not taking cold medicine, not taking headache medicine when a headache comes or if I have aches and pains and exercising faith because in my mind, it's, I want it to be pure. And I know People are going to, people are going to, you know, say, well, you know, God doesn't want me to suffer through pain, you know, while I'm waiting on my healing or whatever. And I understand that, like, I get that. And this is where we could break into the whole thing of, well, you got to use wisdom and all of that. And my thing is like, I want to get to a, I want to walk in a place where Jesus walked. I want to walk into a place to where I live my life sickness free and pain free in my own body, but not just in my own body and in my house. And I want to walk that out the way Jesus walked that out to where Jesus never one time, to my knowledge, when it came to healing, used the phrase, well, you better use wisdom. Think about all the times to where we would think you need to use wisdom. And Jesus went completely against that. Think about when 
here's a good example. Think about when people have COVID and you think, well, you better stay away because I got COVID or I better stay away from people because I got COVID or whatever the case may be. How come Jesus didn't use that logic when it came to the lepers? How come leprosy is ridiculously contagious? It could kill you. It rots your body. But Jesus went up to the ridiculously contagious people and wasn't afraid of catching it, but he actually could give the life that he had. He wasn't afraid of receiving the sickness because he was so full of life. Like we think, oh, you better use wisdom and you better not get around people who are sick. Or we could just strive to be more like Jesus and say, I'm going to get around sick people. I don't care because how else am I supposed to pray for people who are sick unless I get around people who are sick? And then, yeah, do you get in proximity and run the risk of catching it? Yeah. Or we could just get a different mindset. These are the things that drive me bonkers. And I don't, I'm, I'm not living this 100%, guys. And there's, I'm, I'm probably, if you've made it this far into it, I'm probably 30, 45 minutes into talking. But if you've made it this far, I've probably made several people mad. Uh, but that's where I want to be. Is that not why we're here? Is to be, to look more like Jesus? How are we ever going to get there unless we're willing to throw out the mental rule book sometimes or all the time? And stop trying to walk in what we think is quote unquote wisdom and just try to live like Jesus and just realize that we have the fullness of God that dwells on the inside of us and do our best to walk that out. And I don't, I would rather, guys, to me, let's talk in circles. To to me, dealing with a headache for an hour or two hours or whatever and really going at that thing and praying for it. And, and not taking medicine, knowing I could have some relief, but instead trying to exercise my faith and believe in God and seeing God come through and that headache go away, that would be so worth a two hour long headache to me to know, yes, I'm exercising my faith. I reached into the supernatural and I received something that Jesus paid for. The stripes on his back paid for. I pulled that out of the kingdom. I used my keys and I pulled that from the kingdom and received it in my physical body. It would that not be worth having some pain in your body, you know? I don't know. And maybe, maybe, just maybe. <laughs> just maybe I'm crazy. But If I'm crazy, y'all don't tell me because I'd rather be crazy and have my heart be so bent towards God the way it is right now than I would be sane or use wisdom or something like that. Like, I don't want to use wisdom. I don't. Like, I don't want to. I want to be, I want to be foolish. I don't want to be wise. I want, I want to be, I I want to be foolish when it comes. I want to be like a little kid. I don't want to know no better. I don't want to know that if you, you know, you get around sick people. Asher don't know you better stay away from that person because he's not feeling good. Asher don't know that. He's just a little kid, you know. I have to teach him. Wow, dang. Wow. I have to teach Asher don't get around sick people because what they have could get on you. Why would I teach my son that? Why don't I teach my son, hey, when you see someone who's sick, Don't worry, that can't get on you. You should go lay hands on them and pray for them. Holy cow. Wow. Wow. Where do those mindsets come from? It don't come from the word. I don't, I'm trying to think, where in the Bible can I, can I read, make sure you don't get around sick people, lest that sickness hop on you in Jesus name. No, it says go lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Man, we pick these things up and and walk so under. I don't want to be on a soapbox. I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video here because I am actually headed to Mobile and I'm about to go in the tunnel. So it's probably going to get dark, but or maybe not. There's lights in the tunnel, but I, I don't want it to sound like I'm on a soapbox. And I don't I definitely don't want to be prideful or be on a soapbox because like I said, guys, <gasps> just kidding. Like I said, I, I don't walk this stuff out 100% perfect, you know, but I'm trying. The thing is, I'm, I'm trying. I'm making strides. I'm making effort because I don't want to live the status quo with God. I don't want to live the status quo in my life. I want to walk in the supernatural. I want to receive the things that God has for me. 
because of God's love, man, because God, because God loves me. And on top of that, I got to get myself in a position to where I can share that love with other people. I've got to get myself in a position to where I can not just receive that love for myself, but I can show the world how much God loves them. That's again, guys, what are we here for? If not that, you know, if God just wanted us to fellowship with him in heaven and just walk around in heaven all day long, he could have done that. He could have saved us, you know, as soon as we get saved, he could just snatch us from the earth and take us to heaven, you know, but he doesn't want that. He left us here for a reason and not to suffer, but to shine and to, and to develop the kingdom on the inside of us and share that kingdom with everybody else. Okay. I think that's enough. If you made it this far, then congratulations. This is probably one of the longest videos I've ever done. Probably one of the longest. We'll call it a podcast. A vlogcast. A vlogcast. Vo video podcast. Vodcast. That's what I was calling it. We'll call it a vodcast. Even though Shauna, she does not think. She said podcast is only audio. Whoa. They are so angry. Angry pants. Shauna doesn't think that podcasts are videos. And I'm like, videos are, can be podcasts. They're not just audio launch out into the deep guys um thank you so much for listening to me rambling thanks for listening to my heart and we will see you on the next one